We begin today with Psalm 15. Please read responsibly by the whole verse. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. Hello, neighbor. I'm so glad that you're joining us for this online worship opportunity. This weekly video is an offering from Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. Heart of Illinois Lutheran includes two congregations in north central Illinois. Emmanuel Lutheran, which is south of the small town of Compton, and First Lutheran, which sits in the center of the town of Lee. My name is Jeff Schlesinger. I am the pastor at Heart of Illinois Lutheran. You are always welcome to worship with us. We, we'd love to have you join us in person. We gather each Sunday at Emmanuel at 8.30 a.m. and at first at 10.30 a.m. We produce these online videos so that those unable to join us in person are able to stay tied into our faith community. We work hard to create videos that help you feel as if you are with us in person incorporating the voices of many of our members and utilizing the same and similar liturgy as we do on Sunday morning. You will find the liturgy printed on the screen so that you can participate. The regular print is for the leader, while we invite you to respond with what appears in bold. We also provide the words for the music so that you can sing along. Welcome to worship, dear friend. We are overjoyed that you are with us. We now continue with worship, seeking a word of forgiveness from our loving God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
brothers and sisters, Jesus died for you and forgives your sins. It is my privilege to tell you that all of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our strength, without, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. first reading is from the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The second reading is from the first chapter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the truth of word so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Here ends the readings. Our Holy Gospel today is from the seventh chapter of Mark. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, 
they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophet, right, prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold the human tradition. And he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile the person. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I went to the doctor this week. Previously, I had gone in to have blood work done so the doctor and I could discuss my health issues. As many of you know, when you have blood work done, you're supposed to fast for 8 to 12 hours beforehand. No food, nothing to drink but water. So I always schedule my blood tests for first thing in the morning. As I was talking to the phlebotomist, that's a fancy word for a person who does the blood work. I'm just trying to impress you here with my vocabulary. As I was talking with the phlebotomist, I was teasing her that she had to hurry because I needed my coffee. She giggled and even agreed with me. I told her that should my doctor suggest that I stop drinking coffee, I'll be getting a new doctor. As you all most likely know, I love coffee. Not only do I drink coffee as a pick-me-up in the morning, but I enjoy an after-meal cup of coffee, particularly with dessert. I enjoy a mid-morning or afternoon and or afternoon coffee break. I enjoy having a cup of coffee with me at my desk that is refilled regularly. And one of my all-time favorite things in the world is, after a long day of backpacking, once camp has been set up, to sit by an overlook or by the fire and relax with a good cup of coffee. Drinking coffee is something I have made an integral part of my life. It is very special to me. It is a practice or tradition for me to have coffee. I would indeed be disappointed if a doctor told me I had to give up coffee. But here's the thing. This integrating coffee into so many aspects of my life is something I have done. You can call it an addiction if you like, and, and you would not be wrong. My, my body does crave it, but more than anything, my mind craves it. Coffee is an element I've introduced and integrated into my life, not one that must or should be part of my life. And the truth is, if a doctor did tell me that I had to give up coffee, as much as I may resist or be angry about it, I would have to consider it. Which brings us to Jesus and his disciples and, and the hand-washing controversy with the Pharisees and the scribes. The Pharisees and scribes were appalled that the disciples were eating without first washing their hands. Now, before you offer too much sympathy to the Pharisaic perspective, you need to know that they weren't talking about cleaning your hands. 
They weren't talking about scrubbing and rinsing under hot water while you say that ABC is to make sure all the germs and bacteria are eliminated. Germs and bacteria were nowhere in their thought process. The washing they were talking about was a ritual washing. Somewhere along the line, a ritual had developed to put your hands in water and then dry them as you come to a meal. Presumably, the symbolism was that you were wiping away your transgressions and coming pure to receive the bounty that God had provided. It's actually a rather moving ritual. The thing is, somewhere along the way, the Pharisees and or the scribes or, or some other religious thought religious authority, allowed this ritual to morph into law. In other words, instead of a, a nice, symbolic, optional practice, it became normalized, and it became a must. That is, it became something that a good, God-fearing Jew must do prior to eating. Jesus, of course, calls them out on it. He calls them hypocrites and, and accuses them of placing human tradition before the commandment of God. Jesus is absolutely right. But as you can imagine, calling them hypocrites and pointing out their bad theology, <laughs> that did not endear him to them. Which, of course, is all part of the story of Jesus ending up on the cross. But rather than focusing on the, the tension with the Pharisees and the scribes, I want to consider this incident for a few moments in regards to what it might teach us about how to be disciples, how to faithfully follow Jesus. You abandon the commandment of God and hold the human tradition, says Jesus. I think what Jesus is saying to the scribes and Pharisees, as well as to his disciples and to you and me, I think what he is telling us is that we are getting our priorities turned around. One preacher commented on this saying, when traditions become theological dictates rather than theology shaping and reshaping our traditions, we are at risk of the errancy of the religious leaders. Let me say that once again so that you can better process it. When traditions become theological dictates, rather than theology shaping and reshaping our traditions, we are at risk of the errancy of the religious leaders. What she is saying is quite profound, yet quite simple. We need to see things through our God lens first and foremost. Our, our understanding of God and who God is in our life is what should determine the way we live our life, the actions we take, and the rituals or practices we engage in, not the other way around. Listen to how she follows up with this statement. When traditions become theological dictates rather than theology shaping and reshaping our traditions, we are at risk of the errancy of the religious leaders. During this season, we might reflect on our church practices and long-held traditions. Have we kept kind regard for others at the center of the traditions to which we are beholden? Have we subjected others to traditions or customs without regard for their needs? She is spot on. Our theology especially as we state it as Lutherans, is quite clear. We are saved by grace through faith for the world. Thus, our faith tells us the good news that our relationship with God and our salvation are grace, a free gift, and we need not worry about that. Therefore, all we need to worry about is that last part, for the world. Well, Jesus makes that quite easy for us as well. How do we do that? Love God and love your neighbor, he tells us. That's it. Just love others. And so I ask, 
Have we ever let our traditions of the church come first over our concern for our neighbor? <laughs> Absolutely. We aren't perfect. We've messed up consistently over the centuries. In fact, I would argue that the plethora of denominations we have in Christianity is a result of not agreeing on traditions, and in many cases, elevating our traditions to law. But perhaps what at times has tarnished the church more deeply are those informal and unspoken traditions that have kept people away. One of the examples that I have often used that has finally softened over the last couple of decades is the unwritten dress code for worship. For many, many years, it was an accepted practice that you must dress up for worship on Sunday morning. Unfortunately, and not necessarily intentionally, that put an economic barrier on the doors of our sanctuaries. Do you see what Jesus is telling us in this episode? Just put God first. When you do, you'll be concerned first about the needs of others. And those other traditions and practices and actions and actions will become secondary. Now, it's not that our regular practices and rituals in life are all bad. Notice that Jesus does not criticize or condemn the practice of eating without first doing the cleansing ritual. It's just that those rituals cannot be elevated to something that places judgment on others. Rituals can be a good and wonderful thing, but they should not be normalized and imposed on others. Let me give you an example. My wife and I have this little tradition we do every morning. When she leaves for work, she says to me, bye-bye love, to which I respond, bye-bye happiness. We do that just about every weekday. On Sunday mornings, when I'm leaving first, it's reversed. It's an endearing ritual for both of us. But that ritual, as nice as it may be, does not make or break our marriage. There are days when it doesn't happen. Our marriage survives just fine. And even more importantly, that ritual should not be imposed upon other couples. It is a good thing for Teresa and I, but it is not a law or a must. It's not even a law or a must that couples have to have a goodbye ritual. No one should criticize another couple by saying, why don't you have a saying for each other when one of you leaves, like Jeff and Teresa do? To say that would be ludicrous. Before I ramble on any further, let me try to wrap this up. The point that Jesus is making in this episode is quite simple. Keep God first. What's that mean? Simply to love God and love your neighbor. Make that the lens by which you formulate your thoughts and opinions and actions. Can you imagine how much better the Christian church would be if we did that well? Can you imagine how much better this world would be if we did that well? I can Dear friends, go forth and love God and love your neighbor. Amen. The Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. Sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live. The angels are not sent into a world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name. That falls to you and me and all who are made free. Now 
help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to do your will today. The angels are not sent into a world of pain, to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name, that falls to you and me, and all who are made free. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to do your will today. We are made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pause briefly before we conclude the service with the prayers and final blessing and invite you to engage more fully with the ministry of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, our weekly worship schedule includes Sunday morning worship at 8.30 a.m. at Emmanuel and 10.30 a.m. at First. We'd love to have you join us in person as you are able. These online worship services usually are posted on YouTube on Saturday evenings and are available to you whenever it fits your schedule. There are additional activities and ministries at Heart of Illinois in which we would love to include you. Our weekly calendar announcements can be found on our websites. Please check those out. We hope that you find this worship video inspiring and edifying to your faith. We do invite you to help support our ministry at Heart of Illinois Lutheran by making a monetary offering to our mission. Both of our websites contain links for giving and Venmo is also an option if that is a medium that you utilize. Otherwise, good old-fashioned snail mail or dropping it off in person works as well. Any amount you are able to offer is much appreciated and will help us continue to go forth in mission, including producing these videos. Once again, thanks so much for joining us for worship. We are overjoyed at your presence with us. We continue now with our offering song, the prayers, and the final blessing. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious, gracious and, merciful, and merciful, you bring, you bring forth food, food from the earth and, and nourish your whole creation. Turn, turn our, our hearts towards those, those who hunger in any way, way that all may know your, your care, and, and prepare, prepare us now to, to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. God of every generation, give the church a sense of purpose and belonging. 
sustain and build up leaders and lay people as we accompany one another in our life with Christ. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of creation, you name humans as co-creators with you. Where the earth cries out in pain, bring wholeness. Guide governments and industry that environmental laws and practices seek to heal and not harm. Bring relief and justice to people and places suffering from climate catastrophe. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sovereign God, we pray for local communities of every kind, rural and urban, established and new. Lead those in authority to seek the good of all through their words and actions and to mentor others in honest and generous ways. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Healing God, you draw near to all who are hurting. Be with all who desire relief from chronic and acute illness, cancer, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Strengthen healthcare workers, therapists, and caregivers. Tend to those who are close to our hearts. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for all who have fought for workers' rights around the world. Continue to improve working conditions and establish fair wages so that all people may thrive. Merciful God. Receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Comforting God, console us as we mourn our departed. We hold fast to the promise that death has been defeated by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, Holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear siblings in Christ, the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.